Sit back, relax your eye, ready now while you make studios It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go It's the Danny Brown Show, sit back, relax your eye, ready now while you make studios It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go <laughs> Live from Austin, Texas. It's the Danny Brown Show. What's up? Shouts out to everybody, man. I got the Booth Boys in here with me, man. YMA Studios, man. What's up, baby? Yeah, man. I had a great weekend this weekend, man. Shouts out to everybody that came out to um Smokers Club Fest this weekend, man. It was a great time. I will say though, man, I don't know what's going on with um. The flights from Austin to L.A., I, I was getting delayed every time. And, um, you know, I learned one thing, man. Um, I guess it's like something you should know at my age. But um, communication and relationships is everything, man. You know what I'm saying? Because cause my girl wanted to go to the festival the entire time. Like, it wasn't like she, like, asked me or nothing either. She just ran up on me and was like, I'm going. And I was like, all right. I mean, shit. I guess I guess you're going. You know what I'm saying? But thank God she didn't go. But but I, I meant to say, I mean, you know, being the flights got delayed, I was um I was I was in the airport. And you know, I was like, fuck it, let me get a little drink. Let me get a little drinky drinky. You know, my flight delayed. I have a little drink, it's nothing. So I'm I'm having a drink. And you know, she just got upset about me. You know, she got upset for some reason and and I mean, you know, she started to cuss me out a little bit. But being that I was drinking, I overreacted. I overreacted and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And I just grabbed my bags and I left. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't that the fact that that's what I'm saying about miscommunication. It wasn't that the fact that I didn't want my girl to go. I just didn't feel really safe with this festival. Like a lot of things has been happening, you know, in rap music. And, you know, it's just I didn't I don't know. Things have been weird. You know, we just COVID. Rappers been dissing each other the whole time. You know, we we, we ain't been working. Motherfuckers been broke. <laughs> Ain't no show. Everybody aggressive. So I don't know if I was still friends with certain rappers, but it was good to know that we're still friends. But I say that to say, um, so when I when I left out the airport, she was like, don't leave. We can, you know, we'll wait. But I, I left. But then when I got to my Uber, I was leaving. And then she called. She was like, don't get in the Uber. Um, come. I, I'll get you. And then a, a lightning bolt like went off in my head. Like, you know what? She already left. Fuck it. I'm about to go. And I went and I got back on the plane and I left her. And I, I apologize. I'm sorry, baby. I know she hate me because of this. It, it was, but <laughs> I knew, I knew she wouldn't have had a good time though. I mean, to be honest, man, it wasn't a good time, man. Like I said, uh, rest in peace, Draco the Ruler. A rapper was recently killed at a festival not too long ago. So they were pretty much like, they were keeping, they, they was keeping every artist separated. So even if you did like, like, I wanted to go see the homeboy Tebe, Earl Sweatshirt. Shouts out to Earl. I wanted to see him. He was playing at another stage. Uh, his DJ, Black Noise, me and him, like, that's Bruiser Brigade. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to go check out the homies. I couldn't even go see them. I was just standing at a gate like, who's the doggy in the window? And they just looking at me on stage like, shouts out. Like, all right, boom. So that's all I could do. But yeah, it was a great time, man. But it sucked, too, because I feel like shit. I would say I, I do feel like shit now. And it's not because of all the drinking that I did at the festival. It's just actually when I got back home, my fucking refrigerator broke. So my fucking refrigerator's not working right now. So, you know, I've been barbecuing a lot and shit. So I guess I've been, you know, my body has been, you know, it's, it's formatted to only ribs and, and hot dogs and hamburgers and shit now. You get what I'm saying? So now that the refrigerator's been broken, I've been having to fucking go back to DoorDash and Uber Eats and shit. So the past few days, I've been like wilding out, ordering shit I ain't supposed to order. Like I ate Taco Bell last night. So yeah, hence why I feel like shit right now. You get what I'm saying? But I really just wanted some nacho fries, but they ain't had no nacho fries, man. And they sent me some um the fucking the, the regular nacho chips with the cheese. Yeah, man. How you gonna replace that with nacho fries, man? That's you get robbery. What I'm that was like communion crackers. I was like, what the fuck? Do I gotta give an offer in next? You get what I'm saying? But yeah, man. So yeah, that's how my weekend pretty much went, man. Now I'm here. Chilling with y'all. Shouts out to motherfucking Wild May Studios for giving your boy this opportunity, man. We about to have a great time this year. You get what I'm saying? So um, I guess first up, man, um, we got um, Axe Danny. Axe Danny! 
which is a segment y'all motherfuckers can send y'all emails in anytime y'all want to holler at me. Y'all need some motherfucking advice from your big homie. You get what I'm saying? I got you. I'm not like a therapist or anything, but I feel like I, I, I've lived enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm 41 years old, so I got enough. I got, I, 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 I got enough knowledge to, I guess, about certain situations. But here we go with our first one, and it's, um, girlfriend has a stinky box. <laughs> Nah, I don't know. Uh, see, before I even get into this, this is why you gotta. Uh, I mean, I don't. I'm not slut shaming or I'm not doing anything like that. But sometimes, man, you gotta fuck before you become girlfriend and boyfriend. Because how you get yourself in a situation where your girlfriend has a stinky box? Like you should knew what you was getting yourself into before you made these um, commitments. You get what I'm saying? Because. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing worse than going to the grocery store, shopping for all this meat, coming back home to find out it's full. You get what I'm saying? Like, you get to bring that shit back. You get your money back and shit. I mean, you can't do that in relationships. You get what I'm saying? So you can't get your time back. You can't get your money back. You're taking her on dates. You know, you're buying her shit. And then next thing you know, you finally whip open a monkey and it's full goods. Okay. Hey, Danny, I'm wondering if you can help me with a dilemma. I'm dating a dime piece, and we do a lot of cool stuff, slick stuff, and neat stuff. It's great. The sex is great, but the only problem is her vagina doesn't have a good odor. I don't believe it's a hygiene issue. It only starts to emit the odor when she's getting in the mood. My theory is that this is just her natural vagina juice odor. I also believe that it could be fixed and changed with her diet and maybe some summer's eve. The only reason I mention it is because prohibiting us from enjoying our sex life fully, which will eventually affect the relationship. Now, do I tell her or how do I keep quiet? Thanks for the advice. I mean, it's a touchy subject. I mean, I mean, think about it if it was coming from you. She like, damn, nigga, your balls smell like cheese. You get what I'm saying? It will really probably affect the way you go about things. So I guess sometimes, man, being in a relationship and loving somebody, man, is just all about being honest and telling them the truth. But I would say, man, if you feel like, you know, because I mean, I mean, some bitches just got a funky monkey, man. Do you get what I'm saying? So you just got to deal with it, man. It ain't about, it's just life, man. That's what it is, man. But I, I guess the best thing you will want is, is for um, her to not like try to like cover it up with, with other bullshit, like, like just trying to spray some Victoria's Secret perfumes or something on the monkey because we all know how that works out. If you ever been musty as hell and you tried to like spray some cologne on yourself, it just makes this shit worse. So um, I would think, man, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a delicacy. It's, a, it's, it's just a, you know, it's just a, a, a procurement cuisine you're just going to have to get yourself used to. And, um, you know, you just got to burn more candles, man. Burn more candles or be honest with her. But, you know, and maybe change the diet, like you said, you know. All you got to do is just, you know, maybe if you change your diet and, you know, you bring her into that type of lifestyle, you got to Google, Google shit, man. What can I eat that's going to make the pussy smell right? And then you eat that shit and then be like, this is all we eating. And then, you know, and then, you know, I mean, that's a slick way to doing it. But I don't think it's a, it's a good idea to just run up on her and tell her the monkey ain't right unless you just willing to give up the relationship. You feel what I'm saying? OK, so what we got here? Things you, pineapple. Now, we all know pineapple, that has been a thing. They, they say, as us and men, too, if, if you eat that pineapple, when they taste the sticky icky, it, it tastes sweet. You know what I'm saying? So I heard that's a myth. That, have you actually verified? Has that worked for you? I mean, I, I, I ain't never really taste my own nut after a lot of pineapple. You know what I'm saying? I think I did taste my shit by mistake before, and it, wasn't, it, it was more like salt water. No. I thought it was like ocean. <laughs> My no. nut tastes like the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> it tastes like an ecosystem. <laughs> like you don't know if you're going to have a motherfucking uh, squid or you're going to have a real baby. But uh, so cinnamon, cinnamon, I believe that, I mean, that works. Cinnamon, I mean, everything they're saying seems like that would. So this shouldn't be hard to implement into her diet. You get what I'm saying? So. That's all good, man. I, 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 but I would say to keep that relationship going and, and to keep it, you know, you got to be honest. But you know, you got to do slick shit too. Start, start giving her some peppermints and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just pulling up like, man, you want a peppermint? I <laughs> keep a bag of peppermints on. You want a peppermint? You know what I'm saying? I hit her with the peppermints, man. Like she got diabetes in church or something. You know what I'm saying? Bro, if it was me, I'd come to her with a bowl 
with all of the above, just peppermint, watermelon, pineapple. All in yogurt. Like, yeah, just, all in yogurt. All like, yogurt. taste these yogurt. You get what I'm saying? You want to get some Froyo? You want some Froyo, bitch? And then, <laughs> next thing you know, you crunching up cranberries and pineapples and just dash her shit. <laughs> get pineapple flavor. Well, she want pineapple flavor. Order for her. Take, take charge as a man. When she get her shit, just dash it with cranberry, celery, and pineapple. <laughs> Peppermints and shit. Okay, okay, okay. The next email, the next email is, uh, all right, we're going to get off of uh, Tinder Match has a pet squirrel. This is very interesting. Because <laughs> I've been a part of this kind of situation where you, because uh, pets, man, do affect relationships, man. I hate, I hate to tell you this, man. My girl, she has two chihuahuas. And I love the dogs. I love the dogs, but Getting in this relationship is getting in this relationship with three people now. You get what I'm saying? Because now I have love for three motherfuckers instead of you. You get what I'm saying? So it's hard to do anything. Sometimes we get into an argument like, I'm going to leave. I'm mad. Then I think about it. Now I look at the little pup and I'm like, oh, man. Fuck it, man. You know, you got me. You got me. But the pet squirrels are a little crazy. Now, I, I knew a bitch that had a pet parrot. She had a couple things, but the pet parrot was crazy because, um, she said one time she left for a weekend to go out of town and she and, and her she left music on to make people think she was there. But for some reason, she made a mistake and it just played YG the entire time. So every time she so when she came back home, the pair was just randomly saying YG lyrics and shit. Like I'm from Bompton, I'm boo, Sue woo. And it was just, you know, <laughs> it was just a crazy situation. So I go over there and the pair is gang banging on me and shit and, and just saying crazy shit. Bounce that ass. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with the pair? So I I you know, it was it was a bad thing. And I also dated a girl that had uh, a rabbit. And if anybody know what rabbit cages smell like, man, I mean, you think about that, that that nasty pussy you was talking about. Fuck the pussy, man. Goddamn rabbits, man. Why would you want a pet rabbit, man? Them motherfuckers stink. Okay. Tender Match has a pet squirrel. Hey, Danny, here's the deal, man. Here's the deal, man. I've been searching for the right pair of jeans that fit me just right. We all have, romantically speaking. I met a girl on Tinder, and she's displaying all the right signals of a bride-to-be. There's just one problem. She has a pet squirrel. I think this might be a red flag, but also it might be that she's Mother Nature's daughter. What the fuck does that mean? Mother Nature's daughter, man, is the freakiest bitches in the world, though, man. Because to me, what I think of Mother Nature's daughter is the type of bitches that wear toe rings. And I know if you wear toe rings, you, three whole gang. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> I think, you know, I just can't tell. It might be four-stroke territory. Definitely four-stroke territory if she's Mother Nature's daughter. Or it might leave me utter destroyed as a human being treated worse than a squirrel. My question is as follows. Do I risk asking her on a date? Do I hit it and quit? Do I bring food to feed the squirrels? Or do I just take this as a red flag and keep looking for my queen above 18? All right. This is what I think about. The, um, It depends on what you want in your life. Now, if you're looking for like a real relationship with Mother's Nature's daughter, then you're going to have to be Mother's Nature's son, and you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to start wearing tribal pants with no drawers on and shit. You're going to have to start walking barefoot outside all the time. You get what I'm saying? Wearing thong toes. You're going to have to start doing a lot of shit, burning sage. So I don't know if you're ready to make that commitment for a bitch that, that, that communicates with squirrels. You get what I'm saying? But I will tell you, it's probably going to be the best sex you ever had in your life. She's going to fucking blow your mind. So if you're just down with some freaky shit and you just want to get your freak on, do that. But you got to have a strong mind. Because I'm telling you, if you don't really want to join this lifestyle she has going on where you might be drinking pee one day, don't hit that monkey. They tell you, man, don't stick your dick in crazy. If you don't think you're going to be wearing tribal pants with no drawers, hit that pussy one time. We'll see you in two weeks, and you're going to be motherfucking skinny, ribbed up like Jesus, wearing tribal pants and no drawers, no shirts on, no motherfucking shoes and socks, climbing up trees and shit, all for the love of that pussy. So it depends on what you want in your life, and, you know, it is what it is, man. But shouts out to you, man. I will say you found you a good one, depending on what you want in your life. You get what I'm saying? Me, personally, I just ride it out. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ride it out because you got to give, you know, different forms of lifestyles. It, 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 it opens up your mind to a lot of shit because I'm pretty sure she's going to teach you something that's going to probably make you live like 10 more years if you didn't know this bitch. You get what I'm saying? She's going to have some type of organic 
drink some garlic, throw some motherfucking peppermints up your asshole. Next thing you know, you're gonna vomit, you're gonna do do some red shit, and then you're gonna be good. So you give it what I'm saying? <laughs> you ever get sick, just hit her up. You get what I'm saying? Spin the motherfucking wheel then. <laughs> so every time, you know, y'all gotta understand, man, my years of uh, substance abuse, a lot of drinking, man. Every now and then, man, um, the brain just cancels itself and it goes into system error. That's what we're gonna call this right now. This is a system error. So every time I have a system error, we're gonna bring out this motherfucking wheel and we're gonna spin this motherfucker. We're gonna talk about some shit. Let's go. Dick Cheney, ain't this about a bitch? Crazy shit. When I came in here today and these motherfuckers showed me this wheel, I told them, I don't know what the fuck Dick Cheney got going on. Is this nigga still living? But I, so I will say rest in peace, Dick Cheney. I don't know if he's still living, but uh, 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 but Dick Cheney, I, I pretty much know he's like a, um, he's a Republican, right? Yeah, he's a Republican. Yeah, yeah, he gotta be, man. Come on, man. You can look at him, man. Yeah, he was George Bush's vice president. George Bush vice president. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, shots out to the Iraq war. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you had a lot to do with that shit, right? Yeah. But the name Dick Cheney, man, it had to be hard growing up with that. It's a good name. Um, it depends if you got a big dick. <laughs> but I'm looking at him, man. I already know cuz ain't packing that. He ain't got that. <laughs> Dick Cheney ain't doing nothing, man. But yeah, Dick it's it's how old is Dick Cheney, man? Let's see this. Let's see this, man, because if if, if this nigga's still living, I Dick Cheney. Oh, this nigga dead. <laughs> 81. Oh, he's still living? Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the that's that adrenochrome. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. There ain't no way, man. Ain't no way, man. What the fuck he doing, man? Cause I I I know people, man. Like I say, man, cuz hit the squirrel bitch. And he can do all the shit he wants. Climb the trees, drink the chlorophyll, black sea moss, motherfucking seed oil, all that shit. And he ain't gonna make it to 81. This nigga made it to 81. How? How? Someone explain to me. Yeah, he, he, I mean, shots out to Dick Cheney, man. I don't want no problems. You get what I'm saying? So I, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought you was dead, but I see you out here still kicking. You still doing it in these streets. And I will say, I, I, I look up to anybody that's 81 years old, because I would love to make it to 81 years old, especially if you're 81, you still can fuck, because the sex got to hit different at 81. You get what I'm saying? The balls is dragging on the ground. You get what I'm saying? Like just, you, you, you take a little more abuse than you can. Like you might be wanting balls scraping sex. You get what I'm saying? Like I need my shit scraping the ground. You only doing motherfucking, uh, <laughs> you only doing donkey, you only doing donkey poses in that motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, shouts out to motherfucking Dick Cheney, man. I mean, what does he, what, what does he do? Is he still in like office and shit? Like doing shit? Or he just chilling? Ain't he the one who he shot a dude when he was hunting or something? Yeah, he That's shot right a guy man. in the oh, face. Yeah, he was on a hunting people. trip. I do remember uh -huh. that. I don't think that was by mistake. <laughs> mm -mm. None of these guys do shit by mistake. That's like when um, was was, was acting cuz name shot shot homegirl on set. Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, that shit was on purpose. <laughs> I think he was trying to get the pussy or something. She turned him down. He's like, "What bitch? Bow!" Caught her on set. <laughs> That's my theory, man. <laughs> Beat the case off that shit. I mean, I thought it was blanks. I thought of that to me, that's one of the most bizarre things to ever happen, man. Cause if I'm doing a movie, man, she wasn't even in the movie. Was she? She was a director or some shit, wasn't she? She was the cinematographer. She has shit to do. How did she get shot? <laughs> she wasn't in a scene. Imagine you just backstage. I mean, you just in the background chilling, watching the scene, like, ugh. And I'm like, bah! <laughs> Motherfucker just pop you. Fuck this shit, man. You might as well have been a game banger. Mexican cartel. You might as well did some shit, man. I ain't know the movie game. I ain't know that shit was that dangerous, man. The movie game is terrible, man. <laughs> God damn it, man. So goddamn, okay. So next segment we got all the time is motherfucking um white people shit. White people shit. Shouts out to all my white people. Y'all know I love y'all motherfuckers. Come, come on, don't take it the wrong way, man. You know what I'm saying? I need y'all. I need y'all. You get what I'm saying? If 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 if, if it wasn't for y'all, I definitely wouldn't have no rap career. You think motherfucking niggas listen to my shit? Hell fuck no. It's y'all niggas. So you know I love y'all. You get what I'm saying? 
<laughs> but okay, okay. But I will say, man, moving to Texas is one of the um, best experiences I could have ever done in my life, man. I wish I would have moved from Michigan a lot earlier. You get what I'm saying? I, um, I guess, you know, I stayed there as long as I did because my family, you know, everybody want to be around their family and shit, your friends and shit. And living somewhere by yourself is it's scary. Even as a 41-year-old black man from Detroit, Michigan, me moving to somewhere, you know, by myself is, oh, goddamn. It was, it was a little scary for me, but I'm glad I did because it was able to open me up to new experiences that I probably never would have went through before. And my girlfriend, every year, her family, they, they, they like to go tubing in the summertime. Motherfucking tubing. Now, you think about tubing, man. It's like, um, yeah, tubing right here, man. I, 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 I never would have thought this was a good time. Because anything dealing with tubes in the hood is like some broke ass shit. You get what I'm saying? We use tubes as toys for like broke ass shit. You know, you tie one up to a tree. That's a swing. Nigga, that ain't no jungle gym. Nigga, you motherfucker, you know how many motherfuckers and broke their motherfucking arms and legs and shit trying to swing on a tire from a tree? So yeah, so so tubes and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't really like my thing. So she like, we're gonna go tubing. We're gonna go do our thing. I'm like, oh shit. White people shit. <laughs> but I didn't know it was like like resorts. It's like resorts just for tubing. Like they had their own cabin and shit. And you go up there and you gotta buy these like dumbass water shoes and shit. What you never look cool in. I don't know who made these shits. Maybe I need to like um hop in that game. Cause I I think I can make some cool water type looking shoes and shit. Cause I think that's the only thing that's wanna stop me from tubing. Is like wearing those weak ass shoes. You get what I'm saying? I ain't wear them shits. I actually had some Jordans on. I said, I'm a rock like this. I'm gonna do some nigga shit. You get what I'm saying? I ain't wearing them shits, man. So I didn't wear them shits. I kept my Jordans on, which was a it, it was a mistake. Because um um I'm a nigga. I kept my socks on. And from all the water and shit, my socks turned motherfucking um red and black and all that shit. And you know to die. You know the die from them Nike products. That's some real strong China, Korean, COVID shit they um, cooked up to make that red. You get what I'm saying? So ain't no telling what's going on with my foot right now. Honestly, oh, I, I was going to jump up. But yeah, um, I got so drunk at the smoker club, I woke up the next morning, one of my toenails was off. Fucked up. Yeah, the toenail's gone right now. I just glued it back. What? Yeah, how, glued, did, yeah. how did that happen? Wait, you I saying right now you're dealing with that? Yeah, I glued Dog. it back down. <laughs> oh, I don't know shit. if that's going to work. But for right now, it's just glued toenail back. <laughs> but <laughs> what, what's the point of gluing it back up? Just let it grow back, right? I was scared of ripping it off. It's oh, hanging it, off. Oh, it thread. wasn't completely hanging off. Hanging on oh, the string I now. That's my toenail. So I, I just glued I it back to... and I wrapped it up a little bit, man. Real like Vietnam War, war vet type shit. Think... So yeah, right now I got a, a, a toenail hanging off. I don't know how it happened. I just woke up this morning. But back to the tubing. So yeah, they had these resorts and shit. You can go to um like get your own cabin and shit and you're hanging out, you know, doing your thing. And then it's like this river. You go down to the river and then you can, you know, you, you throw your tubes down or you can tie them together. But they always got one tube. I was like, why we got extra tube? I ain't know what the extra tube for. It was for the cooler for the drinks. So they throw that motherfucking cooler down with the drinks and shit. I'm like, all right, it's cool. So then we all tie ourselves up. But I didn't, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we about to hang out here for like, maybe like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. I mean, niggas don't hang in water that long, man. You get what I'm saying? Like 20, 30 minutes or some shit like that. These motherfuckers was on this shit for like four, five hours, man. So after a while, I'm drinking. I'm drinking like a motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? I didn't know that um, when you drinking water, it um, affects you differently. Y'all, 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 anybody else heard about this? Or that was just a thing that I learned? What do you mean? <laughs> Cause I was, I didn't feel like I drank that much, but I guess I was loving water for like four or five hours. You get what I'm saying? But I, I drank a lot. But what did it do to you? But once I got out the water, when we stood up out the tubes, oh, equilibrium was all, I ain't had no legs. I just was riding that bitch like, oh, uh, oh, uh, they like carrying me back to the cabin and shit. Like, oh, uh, oh. Uh. That's because you drank water? Up. I don't even remember how I got home. I mean, obviously my girl <laughs> drove me home, but I don't remember to drive home because it, you the blacked trip was, out on um, water. It was like about a few hours to get up there. Shouts out to the motherfucking Frito River. It's called the Frito River too, which I, I mean, that was like threw me off a little bit. The Frito River, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, the Frito River. Yeah, it's in Texas. I, I can't make this up, man. So yeah, it, it was fun. And then they had like the um, the ropes and shit hanging from trees and shit. 
So when you motherfucking, you just gliding by on your motherfucking tube, just random white niggas just swinging by like Tarzan, like ah, jumping into the water. And as a black man, it scared me a little bit because I, I just thought about that's how they got niggas from slavery. You get what I'm saying? Like in Africa, motherfuckers just was hanging out on the river and shit. The next thing you know, a nigga just swung out of nowhere. Like, ah, next thing you know, you was on a boat and you were in motherfucking Detroit now. So I, I was a little triggered, maybe some PTSD or like a past life I was living in his back. You know what I'm saying? So that was that. <laughs> so yeah, shouts out. I, I mean, we should we should we should make a Frito River trip one time this summer, man. It's coming up. We all That'd in be Austin, dope. man. Get us I'm a couple down. cabins, tie up some tubes and shit. We, we can shoot some content. Yeah. Don't get what I'm saying. It's a great time. Don't I, they just don't they just got like fucking titties out like on those tubes? That's what I thought happens on those tubes in the rivers, right? They just be having titties out sometimes. I, um, I guess. I mean, as a black man, it, I, w I would think that too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm some, some white titties come out every blue moon out in that motherfucker. They get a little too drunk. Them white claws, man. It's be them white claws. You, you drink enough of the motherfucking cucumber white claws. You showing titties, man. I, I, I think there is like a spot. Like one of them is like a nude, you know, tube. Oh, it's a. Uh, yeah. Oh, you talking about um, Hippie oh, Hollow. Hippie Hollow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I seen it on Reddit. Uh. <laughs> well, actually, what I was searching for. But. <laughs> Yeah, I heard about Hippie Hollow, but the thing about the thing about nudist places and shit, they always be like, yeah, pull up, get naked, have a good time. I ain't that open and free with my shit like that, man. Pulling up, get naked, man, this motherfucker gonna get hard. I see the right situation. You get what I'm saying? They, they gonna get offended when they see hard dicks chilling on nudist beaks. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if I got the restraint, and I don't know if I got the strength for me for me to not make a chubby happen. If I see a fat ass walk past, you get what I'm saying? I don't care who I'm with. Bitch walk past at the nude beach, big ass titties, fat, looking good. That motherfucker gonna get hard, man. I mean, I thought it was over with, man, but that motherfucker still work. He still work. <laughs> and I think Hippie Hollow will give me more confidence in my life and it'll let me know, like, you still young. You got it. You still got it. All right, all right. Let's switch up. Let's switch up. So, uh, another segment. <laughs> All right, we got another one, man. It's called You Know What I'm Saying. You know what I'm saying, nigga. And every week I break down with um, black people's sayings, I guess. You get what I'm saying? Because, you know, like I say, man, y'all my white niggas. I fuck with y'all. Y'all hold me down. I got to hold y'all down because certain shit y'all don't be knowing what's going on. But I will say it's a, I want to, you know, this first episode, so I got to jump it off with something that haunted me my entire life. And it's a saying that I, I, I probably hear in my sleep. You get what I'm saying? That should have probably wake me up in a cold sweat. Besides all the hot sauce that I eat, I sweat a lot in my sleep, man. It's, it's really bad, man. I changed like two t-shirts a night. I Googled it, man, and they just said it's the hot sauce. But uh, <laughs> Hot sauce is the best, man. Frank's, Hot sauce man. is the best. I eat Frank's hot sauce on everything, man. It's ruining my life. But um, it's a, it's the same, man. Uh, my mom would always me. Now, you got to understand, like, um, you know, growing up in the hood and shit, man, you know. My mama whooped my ass, man. I mean, I guess, I mean, any nigga from the hood, man, they probably, you know, can relate to that. But it'd be certain situations where your mama can really whoop your ass the way she want to, but she want to just give you just enough to let your ass know what, you know what I'm saying? To, to let you know. But as a kid, all this shit is the same. That little, or whatever the fuck, so let's say you go, you're in the grocery store or something, like, mommy, it's like, I told you we came in this motherfucker to get some bread <laughs> and some milk, like all the essentials. We ain't got no time for no Micah Nikes. We ain't got no time for no nine laters. You know what I'm saying? You ain't getting none of that. And you act up a little bit and she just give you one of those hard, my mom used to have a, a eel backhand, like a pop, like a, like a quick, like Bruce Lee chop, boom. But it would always just get me right. It was like a perfect aim too, like right in the middle of my top lip, just to give you enough to not break it, but you, you thought your look was bleeding, but it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, and she had hit me with that shit in the grocery store or some shit or someplace in public. And I would start to tear up. And I would look at her with those puppy dogs. <laughs> and you know what she would say? Stop crying for I give you something to cry for. What the fuck you mean give me something to cry for? What was that? <laughs> what? And then it makes her start thinking, man. So what is the something to cry for? So if any, any black kid from the hood, y'all all can relate. So you try to stop the cry. And for some reason, if you try to stop crying, it gives you asthma. You can't really, so you <laughs> So now you're just having like demon possessions. You get what I'm saying? You're not, which 
She thought by giving you this pop in a grocery store, you was going to give you enough discipline to make you chill out and not look like a thing was going on. Now, everything looks fucked up. You get what I'm saying? You, you, your, fuck, your fucking kid look like he's fucking having a fucking poltergeist, the exorcist shit going on. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's one that fucking haunts me for the rest of my life, man. Um, and I would say just I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this in, too, just because this is something that always bothered me. Um... When you go to like um these places like New York and LA, you know, they always got they um they, they own type of slang and shit. Everybody has their own type of slang everywhere you go, but they have a like a sarcastic way of asking you shit where you don't know that your life is in danger. And in New York, man, you know, you can be like, you know, you can like maybe say something to somebody or like do something to somebody, and then they'll look at you and they go, What happened? You'd be like, What happened? I don't know what happened. Like, what you mean what happened? But I'm telling you, white people, if you answer this question wrong, there's this drastic repercussions that, 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 that come from that. Like if you're in a bodega in Brooklyn, I know Williamsburg is cool sometimes, but you know you can be there and you like cut, cut a nigga in line or something. And you, he turned around, what happened? And you're like, what happened? I don't know what happened. But next thing, you know, bow, 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 you're getting punched in the face. So you got to watch out for the what happened in New York and on the West Coast in L.A., it seems like something that is fucking just, you know, because you know it's a lot of tourism. And, and it seems like just a normal question that someone asks you. But if you're in L.A. and you're just hanging out somewhere and, and some random black dude walks up on you and asks you, where you from? He's not actually asking you what city you're from or, like, where you from, like, what, what hood. He's saying what gang you from. And this was something that I didn't learn for a long time. I lived in, I mean, I didn't live in L.A., but I, had, I did a nice stint in L.A working on music and stuff. And we actually had a, I was working out of a studio that was on Skid Row. And I used to wear these red vans. I didn't know. I was, and everywhere I fucking went, it was some motherfucker asking me, where you from? But I'm so fucking goofy and, and silly and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I would answer, nigga, I'm from Detroit. And they'd be like, <laughs> and I think it would confuse them so much that they didn't beat me up. But it was a few close calls. So I would say if you're in L.A., motherfucker asks you where you from, the best thing to do is say a whole nother city. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're from L.A. <laughs> think of the most random. That's Moines! <laughs> you got to think of crazy shit. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. So L.A., you got where you from. In New York, you got um, what happened. See, me being from the Midwest, it's just like such, I mean, I guess in, in the Midwest too, it's such a vague question. Like just say if you at the um, grocery store or some shit and you're on the line or something and something go down. What we will say is, so what you want to do? That sounds, but that sounds a little more aggressive. That sounds like, but it's still a vague question of being like, so what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? And which means you got to answer that right. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time, like where we from, you just, to be honest, if you really want to do what he's talking about doing, you just got to answer it back. You just got to say the same thing. So when he say, so what you want to do? You say, so what you want to do? And then that's how you know what's going down. <laughs> but see, me, man, at 41 years old, man, that's the last thing I'm trying to do is fight, man. I'm, I'm humbled, man. I've been humbled. I will tell y'all motherfuckers that, man. I got my motherfucking ass whipped. I'm talking about not like regular ass whipping, like shit that make you not fight ever again. And it was a um, long time ago. It was um, my little brother actually had a homecoming. He was going to his high school homecoming. And um, so him going to his high school homecoming, I don't know if this happened like in other cities and shit, but in Detroit, we used to have like 18 and up nightclubs. You know, have, have, is that like a thing in yeah. other cities and shit? Okay, yeah, yeah. so we had 18 and up nightclubs, which now when I think about it, because he used to be mad like 21 and up niggas in them bitches too. So what them niggas was doing? You get what I'm saying? Now I get it. Because now... It's, 25, 26 years old. Why would I go to the 18 and up nightclub? But we used to have 18 and up nightclubs and shit. My brother, he was a senior in high school and he had just turned 18 and it was his homecoming. So we was like, boom, he go go to the homecoming. You know, homecoming's in pretty early. After the homecoming, we'll take you to the nightclub. You get what I'm saying? That'd have been his first trip, you know? But I was like, I'm, I mean, I wasn't going to the homecoming. We got a hotel room downtown and shit. I got some Hennessy. This is, this is not 41 year old daddy. This is like, 20 something. So I can't handle the Hennessy the way I can handle the Hennessy now. You get what I'm saying? So they left me in a hotel room by myself while they went to the homecoming. And this entire time, I'm just sitting there smoking blunts and drinking Hennessy like I would do at 41 years old. 
but I'm doing this shit in my 20s and I can't handle it. I can't handle it. By the time they get to the hotel room, I'm asleep. I'm passed out. They wake me up. Um, we go to the club. I'm dancing like a motherfucker. That should have been the first sign that something was wrong. I'm not saying I, I, I don't dance, but by myself, for no reason, just anywhere I go, I'm, I'm shaking ass, I'm twerking, I'm doing moves that I would never pull it out. So I'm drunk as fuck. After the club, we all go back to the hotel and shit. And I got to show everybody where the room at. So in the midst of that, I see these two girls in the lobby of the hotel. So I say, fuck it. I, I, I'm going to go holler at them. You know what I'm saying? I runs up to try to holler at the bitches. And we talking. We having a good time. They feeling my vibe. Probably not feeling my vibe. I'm just too drunk. And I'm just, you know, confident and shit. But. I didn't notice they had like four, five niggas with them. You get what I'm saying? They just watching me talk to their bitches and just letting it rock. So they walk up and one of the niggas say, if this nigga ain't got no heater, we about to beat his ass. That was sign number one for me to get the fuck out of there. And I had my homie with me and he just pulled me out of there like, Danny, come on, man, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we walked off and we walked off. We was going back to the elevator and shit. But in my drunken Hennessy rage, something just hit my brain. I was like, you know what? Fuck these niggas. And I turned around and I ran and I went to walk back up on them. And honestly, man, the last thing I remember, man, I don't even remember seeing a punch being thrown. I just remember seeing a nigga um, face get close up to mine, like doing Michael Jackson choreography. He just he just shook his head like that. Like. And the next thing I know, motherfuckers was waking me up off the ground. <laughs> and they picked me up and shit. I'm all fucked up, bloody beat up. It was statues and shit. Cause we had like a nice hotel. It was actually called the Poncha Train Hotel that was in downtown Detroit. It, it, I don't think it's called the Poncha Train now. It's probably it's called something different. But yeah, yeah, I guess that I don't think I threw a punch though. So 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 shirt off cuz did a lot better than what I did. I just walked up talking shit, like, what's up? What y'all niggas going? And he said. He just did like a Michael Jackson thriller choreographer move. And but the worst part about getting your ass whipped like that, man, was the next day, man. Cause I forgot, as drunk as I was, smoking weed and shit. And I woke up and just staring in the mirror, looking at myself, brushing my teeth. I'm gonna kill these niggas. <laughs> when I find these niggas, I'm gonna kill these. And part two to the story, I found one of the niggas. When I was in jail, let me tell you this, and it didn't work out. It still didn't work out. So I work in registry in jail, which is like, you know, I work downstairs where you get registered in and, and shit like that. So one of the guys that beat me up, he actually was in jail. He was going to court. And I seen the nigga. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm about to get this nigga. You get what I'm saying? So I, so I got a broom. You know, I'm sweeping up and shit. And I go in his cell, and I'm faking like I'm sweeping and shit. You get what I'm saying? And... I don't know, maybe I, I maybe just didn't have my plan all the way together. So I just take the broom and I try to clock him with the broom. This motherfucker catch the broom with one hand, like, bow, like some Jet Li ill shit. He catch the broom, bow, and give me four stiff bitches to the nose. Boom, 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 boom. So now I'm like this, oh. oh. <laughs> my nose bleed. <laughs> I try to do some extra little tussling shit. And the one guy that worked registry with me, he like came in and broke it up. Like, Danny, you gonna get sitting back to Greens? Cause you know, if I would have got caught for fighting, I would have got probably some extra time and shit. You get what I'm saying? It'd been another thing. I would have sent my ass back to Greens and shit. But yeah, so I did see the nigga that whooped my ass. It's like, I'm gonna get this nigga. And he whooped my ass again. So I guess I just got a dead that beef. It's like an MMA. Like I had the rematch. I got my ass whooped, man. It's just leave it alone, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I live it alone. <laughs> so let's get into a lighter subject. <laughs> Video game reviews. Video game reviews. Hey, hey, actually, um, I came to the conclusion, man. I'm not, I'm not playing fucking Elden Ring no more, man. I just gave up, man. I mean, I Bruh. get it, man. I get it. I get it, man. It's an amazing game. But what I will say have ruined video games in some sense is, is YouTube. Where if before I would have had to like finish this shit to know what the story was and shit like that. I'm like, fuck it. I just watched this shit on YouTube, man. Why am I fucking ruining my life? I got, man, I'm 41. I don't know how much time I got left to be fucking playing no game like that, man. You get what I'm saying? 
So I, I, I gave up, man. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm not about to keep doing that shit. And I had to cleanse my palate. And I had to just go back because I've realized to myself, man, I've been playing video games since Atari. You get what I'm saying? Like it was one button and a stick. And then Nintendo came. It was two buttons. And Genesis, it was three buttons. It's like 16 buttons on the controller now. So all the shit that you got to do to play the shit that the... Now, if I was born in this generation, the first controller I had was 16 buttons, I would be amazing at the shit too. But I, I, I beat Pac-Man before. There's no way you can transition from mastering Pac-Man and Super Mario Brothers and shit like that to playing Elden Ring. So I clean, I'm actually playing Ninja Turtles now on um, Steam. It's a new Ninja Turtles that came out, which is called um, Shredder's Revenge. And that's pretty cool. It's just an old school beat em up like Streets of Rage type style shit. So, and it's pretty, I mean, I'm not saying it's amazing. I'm just saying it's something that makes me feel good about playing a video game now. I don't have to be a fucking pro. You gotta understand, man. You, it's video gamers that's making millions of dollars out here right now, man. So it's really a talent to be good at video games right now. So if I suck at it, man, I, I don't, I, I only play the games that I win at. That's my, that's my theory about this shit. But I also, um, I will say, man, I, um, I guess an official review would be like saying um, wrestling games haven't been good in so long. I think um, my favorite wrestling game back in the day was um, WCW on Nintendo 64. And um, No Mercy was good. Yeah, the NW, yeah, Revenge and No Mercy was pretty dope. But I will say the new WWE 2K, it's great. It's, I mean, it's, it's not all the way there yet. It's not all the way like but they're making the right steps to making a good game. So I would say that that is something um, you would like to, um, you know, if you, if, if, especially if you're into wrestling, that would be a great game. But I will say they got to chill out with all this customization character shit. Like they're giving me too many options. Like when I first cut the game on, I, I, it took me five hours to make my character and I just cut the shit off. I, I didn't play this shit till the next day. So. I will say, man, they got to just, you know, but it is a, a, a lot of um, microtransactions in it, too, which is not the best shit in video games. But, hey, man, they got to get their money some type of way, man. But, you know, I had to buy Booker T. I'm like, why the fuck Booker T just ain't in the game? Why the fuck I got to buy Booker T? Why do I got to buy Ric Flair? You get what I'm saying? I don't, wanna, I don't even know these new wrestlers. Like, I would say I, I, I watched wrestling as a kid. Of course, everybody did when fucking, I mean, well. When Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant, I saw that shit in real time. You get what I'm saying? That's how old I am. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I actually saw the pay-per-view event when Owen Hart fell from the shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, so I, I, I grew up and my mom was a huge wrestling fan. My little brother was totally into wrestling. We always collect. I say I was more so in collecting the wrestling characters, like having the action figures and shit. And the cartoon was pretty cool. I think I liked the cartoon. But, um... As far as wrestling, I think I was more, I, the most I was into wrestling was when I was in jail. As crazy as it sounds, because the bitches then, the bitch wrestlers look a little different. I, I'm sorry, I ain't calling them bitch, but the female wrestler. <laughs> They're a lot more appealing when you locked up, man. Like when they be doing certain pose, like a little wrestling moves, certain slams and shit. You get what I'm saying? Like you looking from a different angle when you ain't had no pussy in a year. You like shit. Damn, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I was really into um, SmackDown every Thursday night. You know what I'm saying? If you tried to watch the, cause cause sometimes you know other shit come on on Thursday nights, but it got to the point where I was running my rock, where I was locked up at, and only I was running it because I was the one that had all the cigarettes. So <laughs> I would make motherfuckers be like, I'm watching SmackDown all night. I get everybody a cigarette, and niggas would get a cigarette and go to their room. I'd be on the rock by myself watching wrestling and shit. So yeah. I was doing some bullshit in jail sometime. You know what I'm saying? I will say the last three months of me being in jail, I didn't eat jail food at all. It was like straight Burger King, Little Caesars, McDonald's and shit. I was balling, man. I was living my life. Yo, with, with the wrestling games, you remember uh, you remember Je uh, Def Jam? You play those? Oh, of course. Def Jam Vendetta? Def Jam Vendetta, yeah, Fight of course. New York. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, but I, I, I think now, man, I don't know, man. I think that game is pretty weird. I what don't know mean? if I would want to be in that shit. Like, come on, rappers beating each other up. What kind of shit is this? That shit happened in real life. Why the fuck we got to make a video game about this shit? You get what I'm saying? So I don't know if I really co-signed Dev Jam Vendetta now. That's probably why they haven't made one. Because I would be I'd be pissed, too. You know what I'm saying? Niggas can make compilations of your ass just getting body slammed and shit. I don't care if it's fucking computer generated. 
it still hits home. That's true. I, I ain't never really think about yeah. the the actual artist looking at that. You getting your ass whooped by Ludacris <laughs> and shit. It's <laughs> you know like, what I'm saying? wait a minute. And rappers, we are very competitive, man, regardless of what we think. I mean, regardless of what people think, man, it's almost like in anything else. Like, I don't care. I know what I'm better than another rapper. I could be friends with you, and I, I might not tell you that. I might not say shit like that. But in my head, I'm like, you can't fuck with me. So imagine if I see a nigga, I know a rapper, I, can, I know can't really fuck with me like that, and he just whooping my ass on, on a video. Like, I don't want to see that shit. Because then it make you say some shit, like in real life. And we all know, man, how, how it gets in those voice chats and fucking playing video games. Imagine playing that shit online, and you want to play as your real character now in a video game, and you got some 12-year-old kid fucking you up with DMX. And he talk, I'm like, nigga, I'll fuck DMX up. <laughs> Next thing you know, you and DMX making diss songs about each other. Rest in peace, DMX, man. So yeah, man. No, 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 no. I got a, I got a, uh, uh, what's it? I got a damn recommendation for you. If you like the beat 'em up, do you try Sifu? Yeah, I got Sifu. You got Sifu? That shit. Yo. Now let me tell you about that shit. Uh -huh. Now, okay, Sifu is a great beat 'em up. Seafood. But I ain't got time to be a cameraman too while I'm fighting, man. You get what I'm saying? This shit, this shit got, you have to have too many talents, man. The camera angles in this shit is one of the worst camera angles I've seen in video game history, man. You got to, you have to be a cameraman just to get cool angles and shit. You know what I'm saying? And do what you got to do. So yeah, I gave up on Sifu after a minute. I quit a game in a heartbeat, man. I love, man, I would say, um, yeah, Sifu, shouts out to Sifu. It's a great concept and it's actually a, um, I seen like, I was watching G4 one day and they had like a, a, a Sifu, like a, a, a a episode, like a remake or some shit, like a real live action version of Sifu. It was actually dope as fuck. So, shouts out to Sifu, man. Spin the motherfucking wheel. Flat Earth. Now, when I think of Flat Earth, I just think about Kyrie Irving off rip. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and I feel bad about Kyrie Irving. And I let you know it sometimes as celebrities and shit, or just people just in, you know, public view and shit, man. You just can't start speaking about what you think and how you feel sometimes. You gotta keep that shit on raps, man, because everybody go down YouTube rabbit holes. I've done it. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I've been down YouTube rabbit holes where it's making me think some whole other shit. Have you guys ever saw the documentary about, well, I don't know if it's a documentary, but the whole theory about all the birds aren't real. Yeah, they man. killed all yeah. the birds and all the birds are drones. Government mm -hmm. drones. I mean, after the bitch parrot singing YG, <laughs> I might have um <laughs> I might have some, you know, some some knowledge about this shit. But after watching that shit, I started kind of believing that shit a little bit. Now imagine if I would have went in my next interview and told y'all motherfuckers, man, birds ain't real, man. What the fuck? Fuck this shit, drone. You fucking up album sales. Everybody looking at you a little different and shit, man. So I feel like Flat Earth was like one of those things that came out to, to, to just make you be like, it separated a line between people and how we all think. You get what I'm saying? Because me personally, I don't give a fuck of the Earth flat or round. I don't give a fuck of this bitch a simulation. This is my one player game that I'm doing. Whatever else is going on and what you think it is, what it is. You get what I'm saying? But far as that, man, what does it matter if the why would I beef with you about if the earth is flat or around? And then niggas was actually beefing with each other. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson was coming out going crazy. B.O.B. lost his whole damn rap career over this shit. Like you get what I'm saying? Like what the fuck, man? I, why would I give a fuck, man? I personally don't give a fuck. That's actually caring if it's a heaven or hell. Like shit like that, man. So if the earth is flat or is it round, what does it change the way I live? The weed smoke still go in the air. <laughs> the drink still go down the fucking pipe. So, I mean, it doesn't change the, 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 the dynamic of what I got going on. You get what I'm saying? Now, if you told me, well, I'm not even going to say that. I was going too far. <laughs> I really was going too far with that one, man. So, yeah, man. That's the only thing, man. I thought we was doing fit checks. Let's do it. Drap sack. All right, we're going to end it off with some fit checks, man. So yesterday was the uh, Met Gala. And um, all right, this is what they mean by simulation theory. And they mean by um, we have people that live in alternate worlds. This is exactly what this is. And I feel like this is a glitch. I don't think he meant to bring cuz with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he showed up by himself. And then when he was taking the picture, next thing you know, there's another nigga next to him like, People in Hollywood creepy like that because you know um, they say the uh, Met Gala is uh, thirty five thousand a ticket to show up to look like this. 
That's $70,000 right there, man. And then y'all motherfuckers want to complain about homelessness and shit like that, man. Look what you're doing. So I think that was a buy one, get one free situation. And he was like, when he showed up, they was like, oh, you only got one ticket. He was like, no, nah, this is the simulation theory. This is a clone. This ain't, this ain't real. This don't count. And then they let him get a two for one into the Met Gala. It was smart, smart move, man. Smart move. That's, what's his name? Jerry Leto? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, Jerry I don't know who Lito. the other guy is. Yeah, no, he finessed it. He just got his two for one. That's how you get your date in free. Right. Who's this? this Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. God damn it, man. Yeah, he showed up in his hitman shit because Kanye on the way for his ass. <laughs> That's what that is. He looking like Agent 47 right now. I mean, I get it. He trying to be aggressive. He trying to let him know he with the shit. Ain't got no time for it because he can have a gun. He got a little sniper, a little doop, doop, doop. The little silencer on there. That's what he looked like. He got a silencer. So, yeah, I would say silencer where I will say, uh, this, yeah, this outfit is great for killing people. So, yeah, I don't know what you want me to rate that. Because if you, I saw you walking up on me with this shit, I'm terrified. I don't know if this, I'm going to jail or dying. That's only, it's only two things for a black man. When a, um, a white dude is walking up in a suit and shades like that, it's only in in two ways, man. You're going to jail or you're getting assassinated. So, <laughs> Shouts out to Pete Davidson. Um, this breast cancer month. Sebastian Stan. Oh, uh, Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I get it, um, but I, I see, see, man, the thing about me, man, and um, fashion and shit, I will say the proportions are right. I do like the proportions on this outfit, but I, I like I like a little color to my outfits and shit and the shit I wear, so just wearing like one, because, I mean, you can either look like a salad or a stew. You feel me? More this, color in a salad, right? Yes, this is a stew. There we go. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But just a Pepto-Bismol stew. You get what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's a thumbs down for me. I mean, yes, it's nasty. That's nasty. I mean, you got to be really freaky to wear some shit like that. You get what I'm saying? And I know it's just like, I don't know. I don't know if he, he, I don't know if he getting the attention he want with this outfit. But I would say the proportions are great. Shouts out to, who's that? Sebastian Stan. What'd he do? He's an actor. He was in uh, some of the Marvel movies. That's Valentino. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck you doing superhero shit? You want to pop out with the pink on, man? He supposed to be wearing an Agent 47 shit, if anything. Right, now, this one, um, this Oscar is pretty cool. Isaac. This is actually pretty cool. I like this shit. I'm not saying, like, you know, um, I'm popping out in those. I mean, I, I, I do own a skirt. I own a Rick Owens skirt. I've, I've worn it a few times. But uh, I don't know. I, I I like this. I like this. He look cool. I would say, um, yeah. Yeah, he looks cool. Is this the know. first thumbs up? This is my favorite outfit of the batch, Okay, I will say. I wouldn't, because to me, even I'm going to say this, come on, let's run it back. Just bring it back a little bit. I mean, the skirt is fire, but it wouldn't have been different if you had pants on. So it's like, if you're wearing that skirt, it's like, you want that attention? You really want that attention? You want that? You get what I'm saying? Because it would have been fire with pants too. So me personally, I would wear pants. So I just feel like he just... It still get a, a, a little bit of thumbs down because I feel like he's trying to get too much attention by throwing on the skirt because it would have been fired with the pants. You feel what I'm saying? So, what'd he do? <laughs> I don't know shit. Was, All he, I know he's is, another actor. Huh? He, he's an actor. He's in Star Wars and a okay. bunch of stuff. All right. Yeah. Nice beard, though. Give me some beard tips, man. All right. What about Ryan Reynolds, classic kind of tuxedo, velvet it looks like? That's all about comfortable right there, man. That's how I was showed up. He letting you know that 35, that 35 racks for the ticket ain't shit to me. That's what I see right there. He ain't tripping. He ain't even think about his outfit. That shit was already in the closet. He ain't going to get no new shit or nothing. This my favorite one because this is how I would have pulled up. I ain't thinking too hard about this shit. I'm just putting on what I want to put on. I just came for the social. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is my favorite outfit, I would say. He ain't trying too hard. He looks great. There you go. That's how you be a handsome man right there. Hell yeah. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. And it's Ralph Lauren, too, so. Yeah. All right, this is a Riz Ahmed. He looks like he got the coke. <laughs> like, that's, the, I mean, in a boot. He just had an eight ball in a boot. Like, man, was going in the bathroom of the Met Gala. Man, I know you got some coke on you. Like, that's, so yeah, I mean, first outfit, um, nah, that's not, I feel like, I don't know, man, that's just not. I don't know, man. It's, it's like a try hard. That's like a try hard situation. And like I say, man, you spent all that goddamn money to go to the Met Gala to look like this, man. Like, but if you ain't selling Coke, I get it. 
<laughs> so I will say I think he's selling coke. What does he do? He's an, I think most of them are actors. Oh, well, he sells yeah. coke. He sells coke, though. <laughs> I know I bought coke for him in, in Lower East Side before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom Ford. Like, he's that's, I mean, designer. come on. That's t- I mean, come on, man. Like I say, that's, that's like the same as other, that's, that's showing up with confidence. You get what I'm saying? I ain't trying too hard, but I'm going to do just enough to, you know, get my get my $35,000 worth. You get what I'm saying? But, nigga, I'm just coming for the social. You get what I'm saying? You fuck, you going to fuck with me for my face, not for my outfit. That's what I'm about. It don't matter what I wear. You fuck with me for the face, and I feel like that's what this is. You fuck with everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up, Tom? What's up? Showing them love and shit. So, yeah. Totally. This, yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, let's do one more. We got Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah, this is, this is, that's what I'm saying. This is the same vein as the other three. Yeah. This is the same, but I feel like he put a little more effort into them where they just looked like, you know, they were showing up. He was like, you know, he went out and, and bought this to not look like he was tripping that hard. You feel what I'm saying? Which is, I feel like, which is like a secret to fashion in some sense is like, you, you, you thought about this outfit for months or whatever the fuck, but it has to look like you didn't even think that hard about it. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? I think totally. this is one of those kind of outfits that he, he looks like he's comfortable. He looks like, you know, it ain't a big deal. But at the end of the day, it looks like he put a lot of effort into that. So this is probably the best one out of everything. Save the best for last kind of thing right here. So, yeah. All right. Shouts out to Adrian Brody, man. What's he your favorite movie bitches, of his? Man. He got all the bitches. The one where he was fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the crazy sex scene. <laughs> I just saw that on Pornhub. Because sometimes I go to Pornhub, man, just you got to, you know, I was like, maybe I'm having an addiction to porn. I was like, the way to slow it down is to watch the most tamest shit on there. So I would just go to Pornhub and type sex scenes from movies. <laughs> and that was like the most furthest I can get was his shit that he had going. But you no, know, it's a lot of overseas movies that get a little creepy, man. But yeah, man. So yeah, man. We almost up out of here, man. Thank everybody for motherfucking coming through, man. It's the motherfucking Danny Brown show. Shouts out to motherfucking Wild Mate. We got the motherfucking Booth Boys with me, man. I love y'all niggas, man. It's going to be a motherfucking great motherfucking year. It's the first mother episode. You get what I'm saying? And we, I can't believe it took a lot of time for us to get here, man. And we finally here, man. So yeah, man. Tune in every motherfucking Tuesday. I'm going to be here talking my shit, doing what I got to do, man. And shit, man. Love y'all, man. Holla back.